Andre Holland stars in the new Netflix limited series, The Eddie, which was executive produced by Damien Chazelle. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Andre. And first off, I think one interesting thing about your performance here is that you are playing a character who owns a jazz club in Paris and you're not just speaking English, you're also speaking quite a bit of French too. And I don't remember if you've ever, you know, done that before in a role. And I'm curious if that was a challenge for you. Yeah, it's a good question. I um, studied French when I was in high school and then I continued to take classes just kind of for pleasure uh, throughout my life, but I've never spoken in French or in any other language on camera before. So it definitely was a scary thing. Uh, fortunately, I had a, an amazing coach, Danny Haricor, who uh, helped me. She was there on set with us pretty much every day, uh, helping us to make sure we were pronouncing things right and that we didn't sound uh, didn't sound too crazy. Um, but it was definitely scary. I think the the trickiest part of it all was, uh, it, you know, it's one thing to sort of learn learn the text in another language, but then it's a different thing when you are actually playing with another actor in a in a language that's not your own. Uh, in the scenes I had with Leila Bechti, for example, I mean, she's such an incredible actress and she loves to improvise, and, and I do too, but uh, there were a lot of times when there were things I want to say that uh, I didn't know quite how to say in French, and so uh, it was it was not easy, but she was patient with me and, and uh, we, we managed to work it out, but it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, and I, I, I'm still taking my French lessons and I'm getting closer and closer to being to being fluent, and so uh, yeah, I really, I really dug it. Yeah. And uh, so Damien Chazelle is involved in this series, of course. Like I said, he's executive producer. He also directed the first two episodes. And so I'm wondering if he was a big reason why you just wanted to be involved here in the first place. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Damien being involved definitely got me got me excited about it. He and I met when we were doing uh, press for Moonlight and for, for La La Land, uh, respectively. And we... Uh, Everybody, everybody chuckles when I say those two films together, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, we met along the way and, and, and really hit it off. I thought he's a, he was a great dude, and obviously a great director. And so when it came my way and I saw his name attached to it, you know, I was, I was interested right away. So what is, what is he like just to work with as a director? I mean, clearly we know based on Whiplash and La La Land that, you know, big fan of jazz. So he's really in his element here, I think. But how does he just operate with you as as a director? Yeah, he, um, you know, m my favorite my favorite directors that I've worked with uh, have something in common, which is that they really trust uh, the actors who they hire. Uh, and Damien is like that. He he really gave myself and Amanda and all the actors really a lot of latitude when it came to the text and also just to the way that we wanted to, to inhabit these characters. Um, also the way that he filmed the series, the way that he worked with us felt a bit like like uh, like making music. You know, it was, it was a lot of improvisation, a lot of kind of um, finding things on the fly. You'll see the camera work in the show is like that. It's sort of the camera's always kind of searching for for the right spot in the way that, you know, we were searching for the, the uh, the right notes to play both uh, as as actors and, and the musicians. So I think that his his directing style and the music in the show and just the sort of world of the series really matched up uh, in a great way. And so for me, I, I really enjoy working with him. Uh, hmm. Yeah, he's a super cool dude and, 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 you know, obviously in command of all the elements of filmmaking. So it was dope. Yeah. And well, kind of speaking to the visual elements, I think the series has a very distinct visual sense to it just from the cinematography alone and you know you're you worked with primarily filmmakers as directors uh not just not just damon chazelle and i'm curious whether filming this just felt different in any way from other series that you've done in the past yeah i would say uh yeah i would say that it did feel different from other series in that yeah, all the directors who we had are our filmmakers, and I think that was the Damien and, and everyone's intent from the beginning was to get uh, filmmakers who really were sort of auteurs who had their own uh, their own styles, and then to give them the freedom to create their own palette for the show. I mean, Damien, of course, established what the look would be and the tone would be, and then then gave them the freedom to kind of put their own signatures on it. Um, so in a way, yeah, it did feel like uh, working on four different 
four different films. You know, we had four directors each doing two episodes and, and uh, it was exhausting at times and challenging at times to sort of switch your brain and go from, okay, we're with Damien today. And then we suddenly are with someone else. And um, obviously the language barrier as well was really interesting. Two of our directors are French, French women. And so um, they were, you know, wonderful, but then, you know, the crew was all French. And so there's languages, multiple languages being spoken. And, and uh, it, it, was, it was a really fun challenge. And I think that that's one of the things that the show had going for it is that everybody in the show is being asked to do something that they haven't done before or, or aren't comfortable doing. Musicians are being asked to play really difficult, complicated scenes, not having acted before. Actors are being asked to play instruments and to sing in some cases. We're all being asked to speak different languages that we're not used to playing in. And so it, it, it really, the whole show sort of started to feel like a big, a big band, you know, everyone's just trying to figure it out. Uh, so, yeah. And so delving into a little bit of your character, Elliot, you know, owner of this club in Paris, you have a lot of plates spinning, trying to make sure everything's going as planned. But there is this event that happens in the first episode that really has him unraveling, I guess you could say. Um, so can you just talk about how you approach this character and his background? Yeah, I uh, was really interested in two main, I mean, there's a lot of things I was interested in about the character, but the two things that really kind of grabbed me, uh, or three rather, was the music, obviously, which I had to educate myself on. Um, his relationship with his daughter, Amanda Stenberg, which was a unique relationship, the one that I don't think I've seen before, in terms of it being a, a black father and his, and his black daughter, and them trying to navigate their relationship. Uh, and then the, the the grief that Elliot is living with at having lost a child previously in his life. Uh, so those three things were the way were my way sort of ways into it. Uh, and ironically, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I just looked over and I, one of the books that I read and enjoyed was this book about Miles Davis mm. which, uh, was really helpful. And uh, another book called Blues People by Leroy Jones, which was really really powerful. Uh, did a lot of work in, in reading around grief and, and the grieving cycle, the grieving process and, and what that what that looks like and feels like. And then we watched a bunch of films, you know, Amanda and I watched the films together uh, as per Damien's uh, uh, suggestion about this sort of father daughter dynamics and the way that he wanted to to uh, to capture that. So there was a lot of work that had to be done, you know, to sort of like try and hold in my head and heart all that Elliot was going through. Uh, and as you say, there were a lot of plates spinning, uh, mm. but hopefully we were successful in, in uh, landing landing some of it. Mm. And Amanda Stenberg, like like you said, plays your daughter staying in Paris. You have a bit of a complicated relationship. So just tell me a little more about just working with Amanda on set. Who I, you, you probably spent the most amount with her, yeah. right? Yeah, Amanda Amanda's fantastic. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not telling you nothing you don't already know. Everybody knows. <laughs> she's, uh, she's really, she's really special. She, uh, you know, she has this, this ability to not only sort of look at her part of the story and take care of that, that part, but she also holds the whole story in her head all the time. So in the instances when, when, when we felt like maybe we were, you know, going astray or we had questions, she and, I, she and I would often just go into a corner and, and, and talk through it, and, and we could very quickly find our way. She's incredibly brilliant, like smart, you know, just like smart, uh, informed. She's curious. She's super talented, hard worker. I mean, she's got it all, you know, and, and um, I really, really, really enjoyed working with her. And I think without her, I know that we wouldn't have been able to, uh, to craft the story that we, that we did, for sure. <laughs> And we also have Joanna Kuleg here uh, playing playing the singer at the jazz club, Maya, who Elliot also has a bit of a complicated history with. And uh, I was actually curious, had you seen her performance in Cold War before this? Because she's playing a, a similar kind of enigmatic singer character there, too. You know, it's funny. I, I had heard a lot about that film and had been meaning to see it. And then when, I, when we got hired to do this job together, I sort of thought, you know what? I don't, I don't think I want to see it just now. No. We're starting to shoot in like two months, I think, from the time that we, that uh, I, I realized that she was in the show too. 
And so I didn't want to sort of cloud uh, cloud my brain with that. But I've heard she kills it in that movie, and I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna take time to watch it very soon. Yeah, she's phenomenal. Um, but what was what was it like for you just working with her authentically, just on set without all the expectations? Yeah, she um, she's great. I mean, she she uh, also you know like everybody else had a lot of challenges. You know, um, she she has to sing. I think she has to perform something like sixteen songs in English, mm-hmm. some of them in French, neither of which are her are her first language. Um, she obviously was far away from home. Uh, she uh, was a new mom, and so she she had. I mean, I don't know how she how she did it, but she managed to show up every day and was and was uh, was right there in there in there with us, you know. And um, and I've seen, I've gone back and watched most of the episodes, and I think that she brings something to the show that's that's really really unique, and and uh, and I think her energy is. Uh, really necessary for the series for sure and i think and i think people are going to really like her character yeah definitely She's definitely, definitely stand out for me yeah She's really funny really hilarious too just an, and a fun person to be around yeah well and I, I was also just wondering about your relationship just to jazz and whether doing this series gave you a deeper appreciation for it because i could say just like as a viewer there's just so many great performances featured in all of these episodes that are just very dynamic. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely um, developed a greater appreciation for jazz as a result of working on the show. I think being a black man, particularly a black man from the South, I grew up rooted in music, more, mostly gospel and, be- and blues and soul music, but learning more and more about jazz, you can see the, the sort of uh, connective tissue between all of those forms. Uh, so that was one of the things I was I was really keen to to keep an eye on as we worked on the show was just making sure that that uh, my understanding my like like sort of uh, just the the like the music that flows like within me like within my soul that I know to be true right and uh, that that it that it resonated in the series if that makes sense that like black people's contribution to jazz was like represented in as much as it can be in this show. Uh, that was important to me and, and still is important to me. So did I learn more? Yeah, man, I got, to, I got a chance to do a, a deep dive and learn about cats that I didn't, hadn't really heard of before. I got, went to a bunch of different jazz clubs and heard some of the new people out here who are making music. That's really powerful. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's made more of a fan of me than I was going in. That's really cool. And uh, this is also a series that delves into a lot of themes. And one of the ones I found most interesting was just this, this thing that artists have to face, which is the mixing of the art that they're creating, you know, the creative side and mixing it with the business side of things. And I think a lot of creative industries like this have been feeling that sort of conflict over the past few years, especially. So what is your general philosophy on on that? And I, I'm wondering how you think the show also addresses that. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big question, man. And I'm, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for me is is what we see in the first episode between Elliot and or Reed is that uh, the two of them seem like they really make great partners in that. Elliot takes care of the sort of most, the bulk of the creative uh, lifting, and then Fauri takes care of the business side of it. And so I think my takeaway from it is just that I, I think art, for me anyway, exists best, at, is at its best when it's done in community and in collaboration with other people. So for me, it's important in my life to have people who I trust. My, my best friend from the time I was 17 years old is my producing partner. We work together on a lot of projects and and uh, everything I do, I sort of run by him and we have a real kind of deep discussion about it uh, because he understands, he sees things that I that I don't see. Sometimes my artist brain kicks in and all I can think about is that like, you know, what is this scene gonna be like? And what is this moment about? And how do we get from here to there? And he has the ability to kind of look at the macro of it. So um, I think, you know, trusting one another understanding that art is made in, in, in community and in collaboration with, with other people. I think those are things that the show is about. 
Uh, I think it's also about second chances. I think it's about, you know, people uh, making mistakes, making the wrong choice, and then, and then uh, finding their way back to some solid ground, which I think is really, uh, is, is really a beautiful thing, especially in this moment that we're in right now. We're like, nobody knows, nobody knows what's going on in the world, right? And mm -hmm. all we can hope is that on the other side of this thing, whatever that, whenever that comes, is that, you know, we can learn something from this moment and try and sort of reshape ourselves and, and reshape the world in a, in a better way. Uh, so to me, I, that, that's a part of what the show was about too. Elliot comes to Paris because he's in, in that place where he's, he's broken and doesn't know what to do and needs to be uh, redrawn in a sense. And so, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope that people watch the show and, and maybe feel a little bit inspired to look at the moment that we're in and, and yeah, recreate ourselves and, and, and recreate this world in a way that we that's more sustainable, and more love filled. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as we wrap up here, you mentioned it earlier. I just wanted to ask you, since I have you here about Moonlight, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting that, you know, you worked with Barry Jenkins and now Damien Chazelle, who did La La Land, these two movies that have really been linked in Oscar history, at least. But with Moonlight, you know, it's, four years old now and i wonder if you just have any lasting memories of that experience and the the whirlwind of award season and just you know how the film has lasted and had such an impact over over these years man you know it's interesting um it's really interesting I, it was four years ago and i think in a way in a way in a way, it's only now that I'm looking back on it and really starting to appreciate the moment for what it was. I don't think I was as, maybe as present as I wish I had been. You, you know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. such a surreal, not just the moment at the Oscars, but just the whole, the whole thing to go from making this little film in Florida with some friends that I thought, well, you know, maybe my friends will see it, my mom and daddy will see it, but you never expect that something like that is gonna turn into what it did. But to go from that and then to have the Oscar moment and, and then to sort of fall out from that, I mean, it was <laughs> it was really, really intense. And only now, recently I went back and for some reason looked at that, the, the moment when it happened uh, on stage. And I just thought, man, I can't believe that I was I was there in that moment. I, you know, I, my memory of it is so fragmented because it was such a crazy, crazy thing. And I enjoyed it and took it in for sure. But um, I don't know, when I think about it now, I just think, man, it was such a, such a special moment. So important. And, and also like, in a way it feels like I'm still, still holding on to some of that magic because like I've had the chance to work with Terrell McCraney who wrote the script. Uh, since then we did a film High Flying Bird together and, and, you know, remain really good friends. Barry and I have a thing that we're working on together. So we're on the phone or on the email fairly, fairly often. Um, Adela who produced the film, she and I talk. So like we still, we still are very connected. Um, so yeah, I think it was an amazing moment for sure. And I think the the like the magic, the sort of uh, stardust of that moment is still is still on me and on all of us. I think, and uh, I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, it's a beautiful film. Yeah. Thank um, you. And uh, so I want to I want to thank you, Andre, for joining me today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for checking out the show. And, uh, taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Of course. It. And for those of you watching, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more Emmy season interviews and head over to goldderby.com to make your award show predictions. Right. Thanks, Andre. Stay safe, man. Appreciate you it. Too. Peace.